Hi, welcome to the tutorial on setting up the Sumo Logic AWS Observability Solution version 2.4.0. AWS Observability is an all in one approach to give you visibility for the most important elements of your cloud infrastructure. In this tutorial, you'll learn how easy it is to deploy the new version of AWS Observability Solution using the CloudFormation template. The CloudFormation template sets up an automated collection of logs and metrics from AWS to Sumo Logic and installs out of the box dashboards in Sumo Logic. Though we also have templates for deploying the solution to multiple AWS accounts and regions, this video demonstrates how to deploy the solution in a single AWS account and region. To make sure your role has the required capabilities and permissions, complete the prerequisites listed in our docs before you deploy the solution. If you have any difficulties, contact your AWS admin to resolve the issues. Then continue with the deployment. You'll also need these details handy. The credentials of a user with the required roles for your AWS Management Console. The AWS region where you want to deploy the solution. The Sumo Logic deployment name. The API keys, which include the access ID and access key for the Sumo Logic user with the appropriate roles, and the Sumo Logic organization ID. You'll find the API keys and organization ID in the Sumo Logic UI on the preferences page. See the access keys documentation for more details. The link is available in the description of the video. Note that the CloudFormation template displays the relevant URLs as well as that can be helpful in gathering the required details. With the prerequisite details ready with you, let's run the CloudFormation template. To invoke the CloudFormation template, click the link in the Sumo Logic documentation. In the AWS Management Console that opens, you can sign in with your AWS credentials. Then select the AWS region where you want to deploy the solution. This step is very important. If you don't select the closest region, you can have severe latency issues. Then fill in the prompts for the template. You need to provide a response to each prompt in all the sections. The first section is Sumo Logic Access Configuration. This is the mandatory section. First, provide the stack name. The stack name can include letters A to Z, both in uppercase and lowercase, digits 0 to 9, and dashes. Remember, no special characters are allowed, and no duplicate names are allowed either. Then select the deployment name. Sumo Logic has several deployments that are assigned depending on the geographic location. Please visit the Sumo Logic Endpoints doc URL for more information on deployments. Our deployment is US1. Next, provide the access ID and access key. I am entering the access ID and access key, which I kept handy with me. Then provide the Sumo Logic organization ID. Here is my organization ID. Then the delete Sumo Logic resources when stack is deleted parameter. If you would like to delete collectors, sources, and all associated content like dashboards and fields in Sumo Logic, when this stack is deleted, set the parameter to true. Next, provide a name for this AWS account alias that indicates what you use this account for. For example, this could be a test to indicate the account is used for all your testing, or it could be a service or an application name. This name will appear in the Sumo Logic dashboards as well as the Explorer view and will be associated with your metrics and logs data. However, do not use letters in uppercase and special characters in the alias. Next parameter in the section is to provide the S3 object URL of a CSV file that maps AWS account IDs to an account alias. However, the URL is required only if you are using CloudFormation stack sets to deploy the solution in multiple AWS accounts. We'll be deploying the solution in a single AWS account in a single region. Hence, we'll skip this field. The next step is to indicate whether the wizard should install the AWS Observability apps and alerts. Because I'm running this template for the first time, I'll select Yes in the drop-down menu so the wizard will install app dashboards for supported AWS services. Those apps will save us time later. Now let's provide values for the parameters in the AWS CloudWatch Metrics Sources section. First, select the kind of CloudWatch metric source to create. The CloudWatch metric sources creates AWS CloudWatch metric sources. Kinesis Firehose metric sources creates an AWS Kinesis Firehose for metric source. 
The key difference between both the sources is the CloudWatch source pulls CloudWatch on a periodic basis. The Kinesis Firehose source receives metrics in streaming mode from Kinesis Firehose. Streaming metrics offer lower latency and higher durability and avoids your AWS accounts being throttled. Sumo Logic recommends using the Kinesis Firehose metrics source. However, select none if you are already collecting CloudWatch metrics. For the AWS metrics namespaces parameter, enter a comma delimited list of the namespaces which will be used for AWS CloudWatch metrics resources. You can see that there are some namespaces listed already. The namespaces corresponding to the services supported by the AWS Observability Solution have been selected by default, but you can add more. Next, the existing Sumo Logic Metrics Sources API URL parameter. If you select none for the metric sources parameter, you must enter the source API URL for an existing Sumo Logic CloudWatch Metrics Collector source. Let's provide the source API URL as we've selected none. You'll find the URL in the Sumo Logic UI. To get the URL, go to the Sumo Logic UI, navigate to the Manage Data section, and then to the Collection tab. Click the eye icon next to your CloudWatch metrics source. Select the source API URL from the API source information page and copy it. Then navigate back to the setup wizard and paste it. The next step is to provide values in the AWS ALB log source details section. First, enable ALB access logging. There are four options, new, existing, both, and none. Selecting New automatically enables S3 logging for newly created ALB resources to collect logs for ALB resources. This does not affect ALB resources already collecting logs. Select Existing if you want the wizard to automatically enable S3 logging for existing ALB resources to collect logs for ALB resources. Selecting both enables automatic collection of logs for new and existing application load balancers. Selecting None skips enabling the automatic S3 logging for ALB resources. Let's select both. Next, select whether you want the wizard to create Sumo Logic ALB log sources. Selecting Yes creates an ALB log source that collects ALB logs from an existing bucket or a new bucket. Selecting No if you already have an ALB source configured in Sumo Logic. In that case, you need to provide the existing Sumo Logic ALB log sources API URL. Here we go back to the Sumo Logic UI again and copy the API URL from the relevant ALB logs collector. Here I'm selecting yes. Now provide the name of an AWS S3 bucket that will be used to collect application load balancer access logs. If you leave this field blank, Sumo Logic will automatically create a new AWS S3 bucket collector source to collect data from the bucket. If you want to put the name of an existing bucket, enter the path expression where the ALB logs are stored. If this field is blank, Sumo Logic will store logs in the default path expression shown here. On the similar lines, you can select if you would like to configure the AWS CloudTrail source, AWS Lambda CloudWatch log sources, Root Cause Explorer sources, and AWS ELB Classic log source. Next, in the App Installation and Sharing section, first select the location where you want the app to be installed, in Personal Folder or Admin Recommended Folder. I'm selecting the option Personal Folder. You may select to install the app in the Admin Recommended Folder. It will be visible under the Admin Recommended Folder of all the users in your organization with the View Only access. The option is used to highlight the important content. Admins are recommended to use this option. And then indicate whether you want to share the app with the whole organization. Selecting True will have view permission for the installed app to all members of the organization. Selecting False will set the installed app to be visible to the user installing the solution. I'm selecting True here. Finally, in the Capabilities section, click each checkbox as they are mandatory. Then click Create Stack. 
When the stack is created, you can see that the CloudFormation starts creating the resources in the account provided. To verify that the template has executed successfully, you look for the Create Complete status. This indicates that all the resources have been created successfully in both Sumo Logic and AWS. This process takes around 10 minutes. To see the resources created in Sumo Logic, let's go to the Sumo Logic console. Select Manage Data Collection. Type AWS Observability or your account alias name in the search filter to see the new collectors and sources that have been installed. You can see the list of AWS Observability dashboards in the left navigation pane. Click on your personal folder, you will then see a folder with all of the dashboards. To share the dashboards, click on the three vertical dots shown on the right side of the folder name. In the pop-up window that opens, you can see or specify whom you want to share the dashboard with. And to navigate through these dashboards, click plus new and select explore. On the left top corner, under Explore By, select AWS Observability. Click on an account to see its regions, services, and instances of the services below it. You can view dashboards for each level in the hierarchy. Hope this demo helps you to deploy the AWS Observability Solution 2.4.0 using the CloudFormation template. Thank you for watching.